Hello guys, welcome back to another video brought to you by Dorkdom Gaming. Today what I plan on giving to you is a painting tutorial for basic painting guide. I'm going to go ahead and go over what you're going to need to paint your basic miniature. I'm going to go over the paints I'm going to be using today, the type of brushes I'll be using today, and give you some good tips and tricks to help you along your painting journey. So in our previous video, a fellow Dorkdom game member went ahead and put together the Slaughter Master. Now as our theme, we're going with a Christmas theme demon army because nothing says i want to give you hugs and presents like the gods of chaos so this is the model we got here as you see we went ahead and added a candy cane to it we got our santa hat he's looking super christmasy super festive it's going to be a fun little time he just wants to spread a little love in the usual demon way as everyone knows so before we get started i figured i'd go ahead and let you see my little setup here it's nothing too big nothing new, nothing too grand got my cup of water so i'm ready to get my uh the paints and the water saturation for the paints, so the paints actually run smoothly across the miniature. I got my journal paper towel in case I want to do dry brushing or just dry for brush. I'm actually using the Citadel palette pad. This thing, this thing I've been using for for a couple weeks now. It's it's actually surprisingly pretty good. I like it a lot. You know, I'm using a fresh sheet today because you know want to make everything look clean for you. But the one I generally lose is is filled with paint, filled with globs, just wonderful paint. Now for today, to keep with the Citadel, you know, thing, the Citadel mantra, I'm going with actual Citadel paints today, you know. I picked out my paints ahead of time. That's a nice little trick, I think, when you're painting models or, you know, you're deciding on an army or you want to paint a certain miniature. I think the best thing you can do is actually pick out the paint scheme you want to go with. That way, you know, you kind of know your steps you're going. You don't get stuck. You don't slow down. You can get through the model. You can march on. Or say you're doing a whole unit. You know you're going to need two you know, two, two tubes of the actual flesh because you're doing ogres. So it's like, yeah, you pick up your two tubes, you know. So, you know, that's kind of my setup. That's that's the little trick I have when it comes to actually painting whole units and whole armies or, or, or a big monster or a particular monster. You look at the monster, you take your time, you know, you already think it looks cool. That's why you bought it. So now let's paint it cool. So you figure out what you want. So for this monster, for this guy, for this slaughter priest, I'm going to definitely go with flesh colors here, doing the red armor with the gold trim. You know, the Santa hat obviously is going to be red. I'm going to do the actual candy cane pattern on it. It's going to look pretty super sweet, I think. You know, you got your little horns. We got to paint those, make those look super good. You know, chain some skulls on it. And then we'll work on the base later. That's probably going to be another video when we actually make this thing really highlighted up. Today, I just want to focus on basic painting, your first layer, a wash, a layer over top of that, maybe one highlight. Nothing too fancy, nothing too big. Again, this is... This isn't supposed to be for, you know, those veteran painters. This is for those new guys who are playing Games Workshop products, playing Malifaux, playing, you know, any other game, you know. If you want to play War Machine, hey, this actually helps. I paint tons of War Machine models and I think they look cool. Even Flames of War, you can use these type of techniques for the tanks you're going to go. So, you know, that's what we're going to do. All right, guys. So what you see here is 16 different paints that I'm going to use to actually paint this model. So... The cool thing about it, when you set your model up like this and you look at the actual paints you're going to use, you can see how the transition of your model is going to go. You can almost gauge how long it's going to take you to finish this model to make it look the way you want it to look. I have 16 paints here, so that usually means there's going to be about 16 steps. Of course, there's going to be a couple more than that because you got your eyes and ends pieces. But so here, here's, here's how we're going to work it out. So in this section, we have our flesh. In this section, we have our red for our armor. This section is going to be the trim, the gold, stuff like that. And this section is going to be the actual chains and the armor. The black is going to be for his loincloth, the backside of it, and other pieces that you might want to mix a little bit of black paint in just to dull the effect a little bit. This section right here, what we're going to use for that is going to be the horns, it's going to be the skulls, it's going to be the front of his cloak. Now this section is a special one. You, know, you got your hard coat, you got your, my, my preferred white is the model color white. So what I use for that is the actual candy cane, you know, the, um, the Santa ball on the back of his head, you know, the, the, the brim, that kind of stuff. So <clears throat> the flesh itself is going to be a Kessler flesh. We're going to use the Reichland flesh shade. We'll go ahead and doll it down to get in those, those muscles, you know, to, to show off the models like depth and, and how it looks to make them look really beefy. You know, flayed one flesh is going to be the highlight to make it pop a little bit more. Obviously we're going to go with corn red. You know, for the armor and for, actually even for the uh, candy cane and the helmet, it's corn red. It's kind of devilish, but I like it. It's going to be a mix of wild water red and corn red for the highlight. 
We might go all the way up to Wild Rider Red. I don't know yet. We'll see how I feel. Probably going to end up doing it. Right here, we have Lead Belcher and Null Oil. The Lead Belcher is a really great color for chains. If you want to do something that looks like tempered steel and things like that, I really like that. The Null Oil definitely pops it, makes it look good. Then you go back over with Lead Belcher to actually bring the accent of it up. One of the other tricks I do a lot is I'll throw in the, the Rune Fing still. I'll mix that in a little bit just to brighten up the chain, make the chain pop that little bit more, give you some more, some more happy. Obviously, Abaddon Black is going to be the color we're going to use for any deep recesses. Now here, here's the bomb. This is the stuff that's going to give you the earthy tone. It's going to tie in and make it look more natural. You know, you got your reds, you got your blacks, you got your golds. Well, here we go. Here's the, here's the actual rhino hide. We're going to use that for the front part of his loincloth. We're going to use that for, you know, his fingernails. We're going to use this for his teeth. We're going to use this for the bones. You know, I actually like the, the XV88. It gives it a, a yellow tint, a nicer color. It makes the skull look a little more worn, in my opinion, you know. And then we got the... The Bane Blade Brown. Bane Blade Brown gives you a little, a little bit, a little bit more for, for the pieces that that come to the joints right here. Just to, just to, just to tan it up a little bit, make it look a little weathered. Y'all you know, like that? So, those are the paints we're using today. Again, we got our palette right here. We're gonna go ahead and get started, and I'll show you some, some of the tricks I use while painting the miniature. We're gonna start with the flesh. Uh, the, the re you don't have to start with the flesh every, the flesh every time you paint. The reason I'm starting with the flesh on this model is if you look at it and if you look at all the detail in the model itself, I know it's kind of hard to see, but when you look at the actual detail of the model, the most recessed parts in this model is going to be the flesh. The hardest parts to actually paint and get to will be the flesh. Now, half the reason you want to start with the flesh, you look at pieces you look at pieces behind the leg right here. You get your flesh in there. Now, a lot of times, say, say you start painting the red because you just want to paint your red. It's going to be hard sometimes to get your brush in there and to paint the flesh in there without actually touching that piece. So a lot of times what you want to think about when you paint is you want to paint the, the furthest in recesses of the model and work your way kind of out. If you think of it like a sphere, you want to work your way to the center of the sphere all the way out when you're painting. The reason for that is a lot less mess ups, a lot less, you know, oopsies and stuff like that. You want to make sure that you actually get that color on there smooth, make that color look good. So with all paints, the, the big thing you want to do, you got your paint pot, you want to make sure you're shaking. You give, you give this paint pot a good little shake. That way everything, all the paints itself like move around, gel together. It's going to be one good color. It's going to be the color they promise you, the color you see. So I went ahead and shook that a little bit. I'm going to pop it up. What I use for, for basically the base coat of this is just a standard brush. Nothing too big, nothing too small. Get yourself a big little dollop right there. You put that on there. I'm going to go with one more just to make sure I have enough coverage. Go ahead and seal your cap back up. Put that on the side. Now what you want to do is you want to get yourself a little bit of water. Now the water is really important for this step. The reason you add water to the paint is you want the paint to actually flow smooth all over the surface of the model. That way the model itself gets a good coverage, nothing too thick, nothing too thin. You know, maybe just a little bit more there. You know, a lot of times when you paint your when you put your paints on for the first time, you're going to notice that you're going to have to put two 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 actual layers of it on there just to make sure that you cover. You know, just to make sure you get it all in there. Now, what I recommend, you know, you just get your paint. It's your first color. It doesn't really matter how sloppy you get. Obviously, you don't want to just dunk your whole model in a paint pot. That's that's not what I would advise doing. That, that's bad. You, know, you can see right here, you know, you got good color. The, the coverage is, you know, the coverage is good, but I'm definitely going to need that second layer. So what you want to do, you want to paint this whole model up, you know, get all the flesh pieces of this model painted this color, and you'll be good to go. All right, guys, you see what I've done here? I got two layers of that flesh on. The important thing to do before you actually wash a model to get all the detail to make all the muscle pop, you want to make sure that the original paint you have on is dry. And I mean dry everywhere in the cracks and everything. If you try to apply a wash on paint that's still wet, what's going to happen is the paint itself and the wash is going to mix together, and it's, it's, it's going to make a pretty, pretty hideous color. You're going to have to wait for that to dry and repaint your base color over again. So the main thing you want to do... Wait till the original color you painted dries completely, and then you add your wash to it. Now, the wash itself, it's pretty pretty tricky the way you want to do it. You want to make sure you get enough on your brush, but not too much. And you want to make sure you lead the wash to where you want it to go. You don't want to just spread the wash all over the place, you know, willy-nilly. You want to kind of focus and make sure you actually get in the cracks. And make sure you, you pull it to all the places you're going to want it to go. So right here, you got this arm. Obviously, you want that shoulder to pop. little shoulder piece here. You know, the bicep, the tricep, the forearm. 
You got the legs, you got the back of the legs, you got the detail. And you can pretty much see where you want the washer to go. Also, wash is a pretty good separator of other colors. It, it, it gives a shadowing effect between, say, the skin right here and the actual, the actual shoulder pieces they have right here. And what this actually is, is two horns around his back. You're going to see it later on today. I'm going to make a pop pretty well. So putting that wash right in that crack right there just gives you a good separation between the actual shoulder and the actual shoulder pad or, or you know, the, the horns for, for lack of a better term. So what I'm going to go ahead and do, I'm going to go ahead and apply the wash to the actual model. I'm going to pull it where I want it to go. Make sure I put it on the face. Make sure I put it on the arms, the chest, the stomach. This dude is ripped. He is, he is very Cornish. So we're going to make sure the guy actually looks pretty cool. And once I'm done with that, I'll go and show you the end result. Another big thing with washing, you want to make sure you give it about, about 25, 20 minutes to actually dry all the way completely. All right, guys. So as you see, I got my little wash put aside on my little mat. It's a good thing to actually put it down here so you control the amount you're going to use. And with the wash, you don't necessarily have to add any water to it. A thing you can actually add to it is uh, Lamian Medium. What that's going to do is you know spread up the wash so, so it, it covers a little bit more thoroughly. But that's not something we have to do for the base. So right here, you got the leg pieces right here. What I'm gonna do is slide the wash right in there. You see how it immediately pulls straight to the straight to the actual recess of the muscle and gives you that little that, that good little transition where we know you know the heighted parts of the muscle so we know what to paint and what we you know what we can highlight, where to highlight it at. And that's what that's what wash does for you. It gives you that that really cool effect. Now you see right here, this is kind of what I was talking about, where it pulls just a little bit. You take some of that out. Boom, spread it out, you know, get the muscles going, make the muscles look good. You know, it doesn't have to be too dark, doesn't have to be too light. Obviously got a little bit extra right here, so we'll take some of that. Definitely get that going. Get started on the next leg. You know, the separation between the actual leg itself and the leg brace he's wearing between between the top of his leg and the chainmail right here. So we know what to paint chainmail. His leg right here and the actual loincloth gives yourself a little bit of contrast. Makes it look a little bit better. You know, and it's, it's, I find it to be a pretty good tool when you're looking at finding the, the pieces to highlight, finding extra pieces on the arm, you know, a corn symbol here or a corn symbol there. Maybe, you know, you know, you know, right here on his forearm, how he has a little bit of a vein popping out. So you can go back and highlight that vein up a little bit to make, make sure the vein actually is in the final product of the model. So that's pretty much the, the, the way you would wash, you know, how would you, how you would pick stuff, you know, how would you, how you would find the details and, and get that going so i went ahead i got the paint on we put the wash on the actual model you can see where all the detail popped out a little little corn insignia on his shoulder right there you see the little extra vertebrae he has on his back the little little chains he has on his back this dude is definitely ba he's definitely ready for some battle you know you got the little veins popping out in his, in his piece right there he's got his hands his legs look pretty good so now what we're going to do we're going to go ahead we're starting this arm right here since it's a big old piece. And we're going to paint paint the original color the model was back on them. Basically what we want to do is you want to have the pieces that the that the wash settled in. And you don't want to paint on those. So you want to be pretty careful. You know, take your time. And you want to paint right over top of that. Basically we're bringing the color back to the model. You know, keeping the wash there. You know, getting here inside this arm right here. You know, same thing, you want to make sure you leave the, the little bit of wash in between those two, the wash in between the actual arm piece. You want to make sure that all of that detail kind of stays there. You know, Get to the shoulder pad, you know, highlight that up a little bit. <laughs> shoulder pad, his shoulder, I'm sorry guys. You know, there's a little cut, a little cut he had, so what we can do is we can highlight up just that cut and make that pop a little bit more. You know, and then obviously paint down here to give it some more depth. Up here in his actual shoulder itself, you know, give him a little depth, make the guy look, look super groovy. And one of the things I do sometimes if I'm, you know, if I feel like the paint isn't flowing well enough, I'll, I'll get all the paint off of my brush itself. I'll spin it to get a nice little point so that your actual brush has a good point to it. Get in the paint. A little more dab of the paint. Spin it so every... You know, the bristles are on there looking pretty good. Get back on that arm. So here's a little tricep action. Make this tricep look pretty good. Oh, that's good. That's good right there. Yes, sir. You know, paint that. Obviously, the little little mark there doesn't need to be there. So we'll get that out of there. 
Make this guy, make this muscle pop a little bit better. Make this guy a little bit beefier. And at the same time, keeping the keeping the actual wash in the recesses, making sure they look good, making sure there's a little bit of a definition right there. You know, so make this guy, this guy definitely a supporter of corn. Definitely here to, to cause some violence and some hate. I hate him. It's Christmas. A little love. Yeah, so simple like that. You know, this kind of thing, you just want to take your time, make sure that, you know, all the pieces you want to pop, all the pieces you want to look good, you know, just go over that to make it, to make it, you know, pop a little bit more than it was popping before when you first painted the little, the original color. So and I'm going to go ahead and continue this process over the entire model, taking the paint itself, putting it back where it's supposed to go, you know, making, making all the pieces we want to shine, all the pieces we want to be better and, and bigger and brighter, make it look good. If you think about it before I, before I finish the rest of this model, what you want to do is any raised area. So right here on this forearm, how it's, it's raised up right there, that's what you want to paint. You want to paint the raised area and leave the recess areas alone. So a little raised area right there. Get that. That's a little, little vein. Pop that. Here's another vein across this way. Make that pop a little bit. Flip it over. Get this elbow. Now that right here on the more of the forearm, you know, so the guy actually has some depth. He looks pretty, pretty BA right there. So that's just, you know, one little highlighting. You look at that arm versus this arm with, with nothing extra on it yet. Yeah, it looks a little more, a little more color, a little more defined. And that's what we're going to go with. So as you see, I went ahead and I took that, uh, took the paint, took the flesh and I highlighted them back up, making sure that all of his arms, his biceps, his legs, his fingers, everything pops a little bit brighter, looks a little more detailed, you know, and again, I think this is, this is really, as desktop quality as you really need to get, you know, any more than this, you're, you're looking to spend a little bit too much time on individual models, you know, just make sure all the recesses are there, make sure all the heightened points pop in and you're good to go. So after looking at this model, I'm doing a quick look over, it looks like red is probably the next thing to paint. It's going to be the part that's also recessed and things like that. So what we did, I got my my corn red here. I went ahead and shook the paint up. Going to get me a good little, good little chunk of that paint. One little scoop, two little scoops. Go ahead and fix this right here. Let's go ahead and water that down a little bit. Make sure it flows nice and smooth. Get a little excess off. And now we got we got the uh, we got the head to paint. We got the knee pads. We got the leg pads. We got the back. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with the legs. We're going to paint right inside. Now, again, I mean, you don't have to worry about being too detailed. You don't have to worry about not getting it everywhere. It's, you know, just make sure you have control over your actual brush, control over the paint, and you're good to go. Just make sure you don't touch any of the flesh pieces. But, I mean, that's self-explanatory, and that's pretty easy. You know, right here, you know, the inside of this right here. Now, again, more than likely, this is going to take two coats, just like the flesh. Okay, so I just finished that step, putting the uh, corn red on all the pieces that we want to have red, including, obviously, the Santa Claus hat. It looks pretty super cool. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually take the same bright clean flesh we did for the wash, and I'm going to go ahead and put that on all the pieces that we painted red to give it a little more depth. Now, this one's not going to be as noticeable as putting it on the actual skin itself, but what you will see is the, the transition pieces between the red right here and the gold we're going to do right here will be a little bit sharper. The contrast will be a little bit better, and that color will pop a little bit more because we'll have that nice red, red wash right there. Also, the bases of the actual spikes right here, the little pieces right here inside there, the little Nixon, Nixon crevices inside of the two armor plates. All that stuff's going to pop a little bit better once we put this actual Reckon Fresh wash on. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and you'll see it once so we're done. So what I got here, I finished the red, I finished the wash. The wash is still a little bit wet on that leg, if you look right there. It uh, definitely has to dry before we add the next coat of the red. So this time, because I want the red to pop a little bit, I definitely think I am going to take the corn red and mix a little bit of the the wild rider red in just so we get it to pop just a little bit more especially on the boot areas and you know, maybe some of the actual like you know spike pieces things like that in there a little bit now we'll see how it looks you know you'll see the end result it's going to be pretty cool i think you're going to like what it looks like and i know i am so you know i'm going to get started painting that and see where we're at after that all right what we got here i went ahead and i finished the the red on the model i went and highlight up it's a little hard to see but in person and when we take the pictures at the end you'll definitely be able to notice the highlights but when I highlight up, got that Santa hat going, got the boots looking good, got the uh, thigh pads looking good. 
you know, in between the corn symbol, we're going to paint that corn symbol gold, by the way. So it's going to look pretty, pretty popping for sure. So we went ahead and got that taken care of, got that looking good. So the next step is going to be, we're going to get this chain mill all over the place. As you see, I got the you know, chain mill hanging from the back of them right there. We got little, little hooks on the back. We got the chain here, you know, chains there, you know, this guy has a significant amount of body alters done to him. So, you know, he, uh, he's been loving life, you know what I mean? So we're definitely going to make this guy pop, make this guy look pretty good. Now, one of the tips you got to do when you're, uh, when you're painting your metals, you want to make sure after you're done painting your metals and even before it's pretty good practice to go ahead and change out your water. That way your water is nice and clear, has none of those metal flakes in it. It's very important to do it after you paint the golds because you don't want that. You don't want any other paints to be contaminated with the actual metal flakes. The way they do metal paints is literally by adding metal flakes to it. So, you know, as you see, we have our three different metal paints here. We got, you know, our lead belcher, we got our gold and we got our steel. We need to make sure that those actual paint flakes don't get in the other paints we're doing. It's a pretty simple experience. So we got right here, we got our, oh yeah, got our lead belcher. I'm going to shake that up, make that pretty good. I'm going to clean that up so all of it's good. Pop this little cap open. I'm going to go ahead and get a little dollop, get a little dab of it. I'm going to throw it down right there. Get one more good, good little dab there. A little bit of water for this one. You don't need to add too much, I would say, because you painted so much of the model, you don't want the paint to actually get away from you, making it too thin. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start off with this chain mill, getting this chain mill painted up you know, nice and right. So there we go. Get that in there. It's okay to have a little bit of the black showing through. You know, it's chain mill, you know. I almost would, would prefer to dry brush this on, but my way of painting chain mill is a little bit different than everyone else's way. What I'm going to actually do is paint the entire chain mill like this, paint all the actual actual metals, and then we're going to go back and we're going to put a uh, put a black wash over top of this. So we're going to put that in all oil, and that's going to be the paint we put over top of this to, uh, to give it some more depth, give it some more detail. So let's get, get this right. paint. So we got the skin done, we got the red done, and now I just added the metal. So what I did is uh, I took lead belcher as my base. After the lead belcher, I applied some null oil. After the null oil dried, I basically just took lead belcher again and just put it over top of it. It's a really clean, basic way to make your metal, especially your chain mill kind of metal pop. So you got the chain mill right there. It's looking super poppy, super chain milly. You got, you know, the chains in the back, you know. Now all this stuff looks like it's way too much right now, but once, once I paint this spine right here, once we get the gold on right here, once the skull is done, once the candy cane's in, that, that metal is not going to be too bright and too much. You know, especially when you paint in stages, you know, you get your mind set, this is how I want to paint it, and just complete the painting. Now, when you get done with it, if you look at it, you're like, you know, this isn't really what I like to see, change it for the next model. But for right now, I'm kind of liking the way this guy looks, looking, you know, super menacing, super cool. So what I'm going to do now, I still got the same water. So it has the it has the silver flakes in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and apply our whoop, 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 boom, Balthazar Gold. So we're going to get that on there. After Balthazar Gold, I'm going to put a dry cheek violet watch, wash, excuse me, and we're going to we're going to dull it down a little bit so that we can make the 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 gold pop a little bit more. Now the reason you you add the washes when you're doing metals and stuff like that is it gets into the recesses, you know. It gets around where you're painting. That way you're focused on on the actual metal. You're focused on those pieces. When you look at it, you're like, oh, that chain metal looks cool. Oh, those, you know, the, the chains around his hands, both his hands, they look pretty cool, you know? This guy this guy actually has some pretty cool detail. I mean, I'm excited to finish him up. So, you know, without, without going too much, you know, let's get on it. Let's get this gold paint. All right, guys. So, so far we went ahead. We did all the uh, chains. We did all the gold trimming on his, on his leg pads, you know, looking super corny. <laughs> corny. He's looking pretty good, looking pretty sweet. We got all that done. I'm liking the way he looks a lot. Did that purple wash. Went back over with another bit of gold. Shined it up a little bit. He's looking pretty good. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to go ahead and finish off this loincloth right here. So the bottom half of him is done. And uh, get that complete. And then we're going to go ahead and start painting some skulls, man. Because everyone knows corn. They love their skulls. The guy's there, there. He got one there. He got one on his chest piece. He got one... I got one on his feet. You know, this guy just has skulls everywhere. So, you know, I'm going to do that. But first, we're definitely going to do this loincloth. Now, the back of it, I'm going to paint 
pitch black to make it look cool so that way in the front that black flat flips over right there you get the contrast between the black and the 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 xv66 so definitely going to paint those colors um i don't know about a wash you know i probably will throw on a wash and then we'll go back with some xv leave it plain like that make it super simple that way you know it pops really close you know with the the gold trim and the skin tone really cleans up and ties the bottom half of this model together. So what I've done so far, I painted up all the skulls. You know, I painted the front of the loincloth only, not the back. You, know, you got it. You got all the skulls. It, it was really simple press, process. All I did was put down the base layer brown that we all, you know, that we decided to go with. After that, I went ahead and I lightened it up with a little bit of the uh, the bane blade brown just to give it a little bit of depth. Then we went ahead and washed it. After the wash. Literally just got the, the shopty bone and just put that over the top of it. Literally just dry brushing. Now dry brushing is super simple. It's exactly what it sounds like. You want to have yourself a dry brush with no paint on it. Make sure there's very little paint on your brush. And you just go over it back and forth, back and forth to get the color you actually like, to get the consistency you like to see. Once you get that, then you know you've gotten a good, you know, a good skull color. If you think it's bright enough or you think it's too, too bright, you can always darken it. But that's what I've done with that. So what I'm doing right now is actually trying to highlight up his 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 loincloth itself. Now what I do is I find the parts that are you know the deepest, and I just run my brush right along the highest points. I leave the deepest points alone because you want that to stay dark. You know, you put your brush over the the highest points, you drag it down, you get the little color change going right there, and it's good to go. It will give you a nice little effect looking like cloth, you know, folding or flapping in the wind. That's kind of what you want. Basically, what you're thinking about is. You know, the light's touching it, the light's hitting it, you know, and that's what's making it look different than the other parts. So that's pretty much all I did to, you know, get that effect. I recommend you use that effect on any type of banners or any type of cloth, cloth yourself. You know, just straight down, whoop, straight down, whoop, and you're good to go. And so I did that. I'm going to keep highlighting this up so I get a color I like. I want it to be a little bit brighter than that, and then I'll probably be happy. I'll go ahead and paint the back part, the back part of the cloth right here, a deep black. You know, that way when the flat folds over here. You got that nice black right there. It'll be a good a good dark color next to the model. Actually lighten up a lot of stuff going on down there. So it'll look pretty cool. Let me go and finish that off. All of the gold, all of the loincloth. Now the red looks good. The wash looks good. The skulls are done. Now, so what I'm going to do now is go ahead and get all the leather straps. We're going to get the leather straps completed. There's only a couple of them. I'll show you the little problem areas. You got right here around the knee. Basically holding the knee guard in. The thigh right there for the thigh pad. Yeah, get that one around the waist you know, have to be careful but around the waist there's a little one so we're going to make sure we highlight that one up and at the same time we got a whole bunch of teeth all over this guy we got a tooth right there next to the skull we've got a tooth in the back piece right here you know, it's kind of hard to see but a little tooth right there so that's going to lighten up and give that section a little bit a little bit brighter a little more depth there's only two of them and while we're at it i'm going to do the teeth close to but not exactly like i'm going to do this horn around his neck now you see right here that spine, that spine came in pretty good. So you got a little spine action. Basically, it's like the back of the skull right there of whatever animal he tore this off of. Because you know he tore it off that animal. And there you go right there. There's the horns coming around his neck. We're going to go ahead and paint those up and get those looking fresh. We're pretty close, guys. All we got to do after that is you know, the candy cane and the old Santa hat. So I can get these done and we make it look super sweet. So we're almost to the fun part of... Painting these Christmas models. I've been doing it for a while. It's by far the most enjoyable. Eyes painted. Did his little tongue. Not going to go too detailed because this is just, you know, putting the basic in. Got the chainmail painted. Got his bones done. We did a little bit of work on the uh, on the horns just to give him a little bit more, you know, depth a little, a little bit more. You know, skulls under his feet are complete. Everything's done. Now it's time to get started on the candy cane itself. Hold the candy cane. And the brim of the hat. Now I always start with the brim of the hat because it's the easiest. And uh, we base paint everything white anyway. So the candy cane is going to be white. The hat's going to be white. The little ball on the back is going to be white. It's going to look pretty cool. Now all, all I do, you know, do a little little knot oil right here. Knot oil right here. Go back with white with a dry brush. Just to make it pop a little bit. Make it look good. And then uh, on the candy cane itself, we're going to actually do a red spiraling thing all the way down the candy cane. So it's going to be pretty cool. So... Let me go ahead and base these white. I'll let you see what it looks like when the white is on there. Then I'll get started in the red. Guys, see what you so we have finally officially Christmified the uh, <laughs> the corn dude. You got the candy cane going around there. All spiraled. 
Got the little candy canes in his arms. Looking pretty super sexy, super sweet. Got the skulls, did everything. I'm pretty happy with this model. Yeah, I think it looks pretty good. We'll take some uh, better pictures and put it up there so you see some single pictures. But this is what we've done, you know, basic painting tutorial. I mean, again, guys, when you first start off painting, what you really want to focus on, you want to make sure that your water is clean, especially after doing metallics. You don't want those metallics and everything. If you're ever dealing with the pure white, you want to make sure there's no other paint in your, in your actual water. That way, you know, it doesn't get an actual white paint and change that color into something you might not like. Um, other than that, man, I mean, it's picking out your paints ahead of time, knowing what scheme you want to go with. You can get whole armies done in a very efficient, fast amount of time. So, you know, if you like these videos, if you want to see some more of those, please like, leave a comment. Let us know what you'd like to see us do next. Maybe something bigger, maybe some 40K, maybe some War Machine or Malifaux. You know, we're, we're, we're all ears and whatever you want us to see. Again, these type of painting things, I want to leave them really basic. You know, none of us are, are uh, demon sword winners or whatever they're called. None of us win crystal brushes, so... You know, those guys, their, their painting skills are, are amazing. So, you know, thanks for tuning in to another video by Dorkdom Games.